we're told that a large tire spins with angular velocity 4 omega. A smaller tire spins with half the angular velocity. I'm assuming half the angular velocity of the large tire. How does the period t sub large of the large tire compare with the period t sub small of the small tire? So pause this video and see if you can figure that out and figure out which choice you would pick. Okay, so the key here is to realize the connection between angular velocity and period. And instead of just blindly memorizing a formula, I always like to reason it through a little bit. We know that period is equal to, well think about it, in order to complete one cycle, if I'm doing uniform circular motion, if I'm going in a circle around like this, in order to do one complete lap around the circle or to complete one cycle, I have to cover two pi radians. So two pi radians is what I need to cover, and then I divide that by my angular velocity. How fast am I going through the radians? So that's how I like to reason through this formula that connects angular velocity, or the magnitude of angular velocity, and the period. And so we can say t sub large, I'll do this in two different colors. We could say t sub large, t sub large is going to be equal to two pi, over, it says a large tire spins with angular velocity four omega. So it's going to be two pi. Its angular velocity is four omega. So two pi over four omega. And then t sub small, a smaller tire spins with half the angular velocity. So t sub small, t sub small is going to be equal to two pi. And it's going to have half the angular velocity as a large tire. So that half of four omega is two omega. So how do these two things compare? Well, it might be helpful to just simplify these expressions a little bit. So t sub large, the period of the large tire, is going to be pi over two omega. And t sub small, the period of the smaller tire, that's just going to be pi over omega. And so the red expression right over here is half of this blue expression. I could rewrite this as being equal to one half times one half times pi over omega. Or another way of writing this, I could write t sub large, t sub large is equal to one half times, this expression right over here is the period of the smaller tire. So t sub small. Now which of these choices match up to that? Well, it is this one right over here. The period of the larger tire is going to be one half the period of the smaller tire. Now, it's always nice if you have the time, if, you know, if you're not in time pressure, to just think about whether that makes sense. So a large tire spins with an angular velocity of four omega. The smaller tire spins with half the angular velocity. So if it has half the angular velocity, it's rotating half as fast. If it's rotating half as fast, it would take twice as long to complete one cycle. So the small tire is going to take twice as long, or you could view it as the large tire takes half as long as the small tire. So that makes sense. Let's do another example. An ice skater spins with angular velocity two omega. She brings her arms away from her body, decreasing her angular velocity to omega. How does the frequency of her spin change? Once again, pause this video and see if you can figure that out on your own. Well, let's just think about how frequency is connected to angular velocity. We already know that period from the last question is equal to, well, we have to complete two pi radians to complete a cycle, and then we could divide that by how quickly we are, how quickly our angle is increasing. And so there you have it. That's our period is two pi over our angular velocity. And if we want frequency, frequency is just the reciprocal of period. So frequency is just going to be omega over to pi. This is how many cycles we can complete in a second. And so at first, the ice skater spins with an angular velocity of two omega. So let's say frequency, frequency, let's call it frequency initial, initial is going to be equal to, her angular velocity is two omega. It's going to be two omega over two pi. And then her frequency final, I'll say, Frequency final, 
So after she puts her arms away from her body, decreasing her angular velocity, and we'll talk more about that phenomena in, the, in other videos, is going to be, so decreasing her angular velocity to omega. So now her angular velocity is omega, and it's going to be over 2 pi. So how do these two, com how do these compare? Well, if I write her initial frequency, I could rewrite it as initial frequency, initial frequency is equal to two times omega, let me do that in another color, two times omega over two pi, right? Two times all of this business right over here, which is the exact same thing, which is equal to two times our final frequency. Two times our frequency final. And or another way of thinking about it, her frequency final, her frequency final, if I divide this and this by two, is going to be equal to one half of her frequency initial. Is going to be equal to one half of her initial frequency. Frequency initial. If your initial frequency is twice your final, then your final is going to be one half your initial. I could just divide both sides by two. So once again, how does the frequency of her spin change? Well, it looks like her frequency goes by half. And that makes sense. If your angular velocity is going down by half, you're rotating half as fast, and so you're going to be able to complete half as many cycles per second. So it makes sense that we are decreasing. Our frequency is decreasing by a factor of two. It is halving. Decreasing by a factor of two is the same thing as saying your frequency gets multiplied by one half.